932 to 33. As they went out, behold, they brought to him a dumb man possessed with a devil. And when the devil was cast out, the dumb man spake, and the multitudes marveled, saying, It was never so seen in Israel. 1222. Then was brought unto him one possessed with a devil, blind and dumb, and he healed him, insomuch that the blind and dumb both spake and saw. So, dumb people, by which the King James Bible means those unable to speak, are possessed with the devil. Uh, not to mention the blind, they're possessed with the devil too. Um, certainly, if not all blind and deaf people are possessed, and mute, sorry, people are possessed by the devil, then a lot of them are. Fear the speechless ones. Fear those that cannot see. They may be devil sick. What a philosophy. 10.1 And when he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits, to cast them out, and to heal all manners of sickness and all manner of disease. 10.8 Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils, freely ye have received, freely give. So go on then Christians, cleanse those lepers, heal the sick, cast out evil spirits, and raise the dead, come on, what are you waiting, what are you waiting for? Get, get to your local cemetery and start raising the dead, damn it. 17.14-20 and when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man, kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is a lunatic and sore vexed, for oft times he falleth into the fire and oft into the water. And I brought him to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart, and said, Why could not we cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief. Right, I mean, here Jesus is having a go at his disciples for not being able to heal this devil's sick child. And, you know, I mean, do you even hear the petulance? You know, O oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Oh my God, it's sickening, frankly. 1720 And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, If you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall, rem shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Now again, if you have faith, you can literally do anything. So if you can't literally do anything, you don't have the right amount of faith, I'm afraid to say. 10.34-36 to 36. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. For I am come to set a man at variance with his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. So you should shun members of your own family who don't believe in Jesus, right? Right. I, I, mean, I just don't know what to say about that, frankly. It's disgusting. 16.1-6 The Pharisees also with the Sadducees came, and tempting, desire, tempting desired him that he would shew them a sign from heaven. He answered and said unto them, When it is evening, you say, It will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning it will be foul weather today for the sky is red and lowering O oh, ye hypocrites ye can discern the face of the sky but can ye not discern the signs of the times a wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign and there shall be no sign given unto it but the sign of the prophet Jonas and he left them and departed and when his disciples were come to the other side they had forgotten to take bread then Jesus said unto them, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. Okay, Jesus is condemning an entire people, the Pharisees and the Sadducees. You know, don't need to say much about that, do I? Isn't that what racism is, you know? Taking a few people, individuals within a group, or a stereotype of a group or whatever, and saying that everyone within it is wicked. Ridiculous. 1912 for there are some eunuchs which were so born from their mother's womb, and there are some eunuchs which were made eunuchs of men, and there be eunuchs which have made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven's sake. 
he that is able to receive it, let him receive it. This is actually a really interesting little verse, as it not only seems to suggest self-castration as a means to get into heaven, but it also lists two other kinds of eunuch, uh, one of which is the eunuch that's born a eunuch. And I find her quite interesting, it's not really related to this topic, but how can one be born a eunuch? I mean, is he talking about transsexuals, asexuals, something else? There's something certainly uh, to give a bit of thought to, I think. 529 to 30. And if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. And if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. This is Shades of 1912 for me. Uh, I desperately want to read these verses metaphorically somehow, but I think it's pretty clear, especially bearing 1912 in mind. Um, you know, Jesus condones and enthusiastically supports self-mutilation as a means to get eternal life. A life of misery with no arm, leg, eye, whatever, for a promised paradise whose existence you don't have any objective evidence for. You know, that's not a smart choice, is it? 1929. And every one that hath forsaken houses, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my name's sake, shall receive a hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting life. This one doesn't really need explaining, does it? Forsake everything, particularly your family, and you'll be paid back, and then some. And you'll live forever. Presumably if you don't forsake your family, land and house, you won't be rewarded. So the moral of this story is, forsake your family. Great stuff. 1247-49 Then one said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren stand without, desiring to speak with thee. But he, that's Jesus, answered and said unto him, that told him, Who is my mother, and who are my brethren? And he stretched forth his hand towards his disciples and said, Behold my mother and my brethren. Hey, Jesus is at it again. He forsakes his blood family and says those who follow him are his real family. Simple message, you know. Forsake your family, follow Jesus. Jesus compels thee. 8.21-22 and another of his disciples said unto him, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. But Jesus said unto him, Follow me, and let the dead bury their dead. Jesus the compassionate, eh? Well, as we've already heard, the choice between your father and Jesus is, to Jesus, a no-brainer. 10.37 He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and he that loveth son or daughter than me is not worthy of me. Yep, exactly what it says on the tin.